You didn't know it was going to be bad. All right. Okay. This next one is going to be an interesting conversation because John B. has come out and said that he dislikes Chloe and Gunna using they don't know B. This is going to be an interesting conversation, but here we go. Deep see. dive of they don't know. Oh, okay, cool. So, yeah. They don't know. I, I'm aware. I know Tim Kelly or Tim and Bob was a part of that one as well, right? Oh yeah, they did the track. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I track. still I play this song. What an amazing man. track! Yeah, it's a, Come yeah, on, man. To this I day, play, I play that song, and the guitar lick still has me in a chokehold. The guitar Today. lick is is is. Okay, so you heard the new Robin Thicke song? Mm, it's, uh, his newest single. I have not. Yeah, it's 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 the they don't know guitar lick. Come on. I'm going to just go ahead and say it right now on this on this podcast. Like, listen to it. It has that. At some way, look, it may not be exactly the same thing. It's a but derivative. It's Robin, it's in there. It goes. Right? <laughs> you know, bro. You know. Because you love that song, don't you? All right. Yeah, you do. I love, And I love your song, too. Um, your songs. I um, love that. But. It went, bing, ding, didn't it? It went, mm-hmm. bing, ding, ding. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Let me talk about shit. No, I love, but, it. I love but no, it's it does get sampled every year. Sure. You know, by someone. Um, last year was uh, Gunna and Chloe Bailey. That's right. Uh, they put that 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 ratchet record out that I couldn't stand. Oh man. And I wish they never did. Man. And um, actually, never got my rights to do that record either. So mm-hmm. we gotta, gonna, we gotta holler about that. That's some business to take care. That's of. that's some business shit we gotta handle. Yeah. But um, but but um, yeah. I mean, you know what? It's all it's all a compliment to what we did. Sure. That's Tim and Bob compliment. That's no me doubt. compliment. Um, but at the same time, my lane is my lane, and my my area is my area, and I earned that. No doubt. Just like if you made a hit in your area, and you know you do the your song, whatever it is, I'm not gonna just come into your area, take your joint and make it mine and then I pay you or whatever. So, you know, that being said, you know, um, but I've been very, very humble about my whole um, approach to this whole music industry thing. Because if I wanted to be rah-rah and come out and say a lot of different things, I I could be Cat Williams right now, Yeah, yeah. you know? Um, But I don't wanna be thought of as a guy who's, disenfranchised or sort of like you know um complacent in any way sure i'm very blessed absolutely and i'm i'm on top i'm up all right it's a couple of different things going on here um where where do you want to start stacy i'm gonna let you because there's two different things i saw here happening here at the same time <clears throat> i don't know if y'all peeped it or not <clears throat> so there's a, it's a lot of stuff so yeah <laughs> You got um, him uh, talking about how he liked how people have used the sample for They Don't Know. Um, and he liked Robin Thicke, um, who is the other version of him. Um, I, saw, I thought it was white on white crime a little bit. Right, so the 2000s version. Of him. Right, so sorry, just the other version of him, right? Um, the, the more recent version of him. Mm-hmm. Um, and that he didn't like the Gunner version. Fine. Right? There's there's nothing wrong with saying that. You can say that you don't like something. People are not going to like that he called it ratchet. And they're not going to like that he called it ratchet because John B., as much as we love him, is white. So they're like, so ratchet um, turns into ghetto, which is I hate black people. So that's what it, it turns into that. And the fact that with John B. being blue-eyed soul and you are a visitor in our community and R&B, et cetera, et cetera. So the idea of him saying something about uh, the song uh, or calling it ratchet, people feel a certain way about it. I don't because it was a ratchet ass song and uh, he's right. He's absolutely right. Like I, and I, and I also feel like he has the right to say that if he wants to, like that I, I don't like that sample of it. Shaka Khan gets on the internet every year to tell y'all <laughs> something that she don't like about somebody that sampled. She hates the, uh, the what Kanye did with Through the Wire. She hates Mary J. Blige. Really? I didn't know that. Oh. The only person she oh. likes is Whitney. <laughs> oh. Go ahead and Google and find yeah, it. Yeah, I'm doing it now. Hold on. Please understand that Shaka Khan 
hated that Kanye sped up the sample for through the through the uh, fire to to do through the wire. She hated it. She Dang, didn't I'm like it. The first thing that pops like up Mary all Blige doing sweet thing. She didn't like, and then recently, wait a minute, where is it at? I just saw it. She doesn't like that people call her the queen of funk. She don't like to be boxed in every year. She gets in front of somebody's camera, does an interview where she tells y'all that she hates everything and we let it ride. He mm. can say that he doesn't like somebody sampling the song and doing what they did with it, period. Like I said, if she doesn't like, uh, some people may not have even known Through the Fire if it wasn't for, if it wasn't for Kanye sampling it, which is another thing that I think some artists don't realize is that sometimes when people sample your stuff, that's how people learn who you are and, and about you. But again, it's if someone takes your takes your song, uses it for a sample for a message or something that you don't agree with, I, I do I can understand you not liking that and being upset about it. Like that makes sense. Like if you take my sample and you make a song about violence, gun violence, or so, you know, whatever the hell, something that I'm completely against. Yeah, that's, I'm not going to like that. And I want to speak up against it. And then for John B to be like, and you didn't even pay. You didn't even get permission to do that's it. That's the killer. That's <laughs> well, the killer. You didn't even get permission to do it. Which which goes into, again, that if he would have heard it, he may not have cleared the sample. So there's that part, right? If I heard it first, I wouldn't have, maybe I wouldn't have cleared that sample for you to use. And that's a whole other thing. So you, you sampled my stuff. It was ratchet and you ain't even pay, pay me. But I don't think he owns the rights. He probably doesn't. Yeah, because I, I know y'all know who owns any of his. Uh, y'all know who owns those rights. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Miss Tracy Edmonds owns his rights because he was on Yab Yum Records, which was Babyface hooking up his wife with a label because he would got need her to have something to do because he was trying to produce. I want to do a record. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, okay. We got you. You got a label, and my, this guy I'm working with put him on a label so we can get this done. I'm gonna send you the white boy that can sing. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> And then I'm gonna do they, the first song. They, they have their song. Uh, was it "Someone to Love"? They did yep, that together. A pretty girl. Oh, what was pretty, it? Girl. Hey, pretty girl. Okay, write this down. Okay, so I heard, pretty girl. Girl. I heard "Pretty Girl" back then, right? I heard it a couple of years ago. I think it came on, and I guess I just never really listened to the song, to the words of "Pretty Girl." The song is nasty as hell. I had no clue. Like I had not really paid attention. Like it's not. It's not blatant, like yeah. but it's some things that get said. I'm like, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. I I just never listened to the song. I never listened to the lyrics. I think I just was caught up in the hook and then other songs that he had. But yeah. Oh yeah, I see it now. Your legs are on my waist so tight, I slide down south to taste you right. You taste so good, baby. Oh baby. Oh yeah, yeah. Nineties R and B at its best. <laughs> yep. I didn't. I missed. I missed it. I didn't pay attention mm -hmm. to that then. And and that was all the girls' favorite song. Right. And then, like, <laughs> then, like, then one day, like it's like it's playing, and I'm like, I'm like, I'm now, I'm like, actually listen. It's like, wait a minute. That is nasty. Remix. <laughs> that's a different version. Wow. And that's how I knew. That's when I knew that I had gotten old. Well, that's when I knew. I knew then. I mean now. I will we, we, one day. I mean, because there was so many, um, you know, debates within our uh, top R and B debut albums uh, debate. Now, another one we have to maybe do at some point is the best second album from an artist, and John B's for uh, Cool and Relax would have to be in there running uh, for this uh, sophomore uh, album. And and then Daniel Jones. I was I was just about to say yeah. Daniel Jones. They was all back to back too. They was all back to back years. That, that was hey. This cool ass Scott from the I Love 90s Music Podcast. Hit that subscribe button right now. Like it on the SOLC Network. You finna get all the real deal on the 90s, the 2000s, and the splash of that 80s. Do it right now, man. And I'll be your friend.